Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about Ikoria from the perspective of should you really be buying this product during this time? And the answer is no. So if you have a lot of money, let's say you have investment money, you have a million plus dollars that you are now, just now sitting on the sideline, I think you should ask your financial advisor what they want to do and no, a random YouTuber is not your financial advisor. There's a reason he's not in the finance sector anymore. And I don't know if anyone would hire him in the finance sector anymore, like right now. Um, and that's one of the things I have an issue of MTG Finance is you have a lot of people who are currently not very good at finance in terms of stock markets. Um, they might do it day trading for themselves or they might, um, but they're not at the level. So I went to NYU. A lot of my friends are at Stern. They get a certain training. There's a certain educational level and even they don't get it right. It's about 50-50, right? Uh, Warren Buffett said that the S&P 500, he can't outperform it most years. And now what's happening is a lot of people with a lot of magic cards and you can only imagine some of these people who are very defensive now, uh, they lost a lot of money. Now, let's just go ahead and say, if you're holding on to Power 9, your Power 9 is less valuable than it was before the pandemic. So when you're trying to make money and you're selling standard boxes, um, I think if you went to your financial or your wealth advisor or someone that maybe your mom or dad, someone you can get advice from, real advice from, who isn't a random YouTuber, they're not going to tell you, hey, son, daughter, hey, person who I'm giving financial advice to that I have a fiduciary duty that you can sue me. And that's the point is uh, you can sue your advisor if he goes like too rogue, right? And saying like, and saying like too many ridiculous things. But a uh, YouTuber, I mean, you can't not sue them, right? Uh, for financial advice, um, please let me know if uh, buying magic cards from the YouTuber is a good idea. Your financial advisor will say you are a blanking idiot. Because look at all these other opportunities out there. Um, there's a lot of them. A lot of really great ones. And if you're willing to wait the five, 10 years it takes out to for the opportunity to reach fruition, then maybe. And I think the return on it will be much higher, it will be much safer, and it will be much more liquid than investing in Ikoria or Throne of the Eldrin or, God forbid, <laughs> from <laughs> Pharaohs Beyond Death. Okay, so that's one group. The other group is a lot, I think the other group is 99% of the people um, I contacted this Rudy Light individual who was telling me that he had bought mysterious box or what was the mystery booster box for like a hundred bucks. And he probably was scammed actually. Now that I watched the uh, Alpha Investments most recent video, it seems like the dude was scammed probably. And he was going to, he made 50% on the, no, you didn't make any money because you need to sell the product to make money. So let's say that you bought the box at a hundred dollars, which is a good price. Let's say retail is 140 again i'm just going to ballpark the number that's not bad made about 40 bucks but let's say that you tried to sell it so you bought it for 100 let's say that included shipping so that it's a good deal you're a financial guru you bought free boxes because you i mean you're a rudy light so you're pretending to be a rudy but you really don't have the cash assets to buy anything and the quantities that would move the price point down right when you buy a hundred things, yeah, it's cheaper. When you buy a, if I buy one dual land, that will be expensive. If I buy two, 10, I can negotiate the deal. If I buy a hundred, yes, I can negotiate the deal. Buy a thousand, yes. They're going to work with me on the price per dual land. So there's no economies of scale, right? That a lot of these Rudy lights don't understand um, because Rudy buys something for 10, 20% of its value. There's no way I can do, but he buys it such large quantities that it might make sense for a seller to be like, all right, where else am I going to sell this half a million dollar magic collection to? Because who has half a million dollars right now? Ikoria is the same thing. Let's say we buy for a hundred bucks a box and we try to sell it 
and let's say it goes up to 150. Well, let's say we just tried to sell on eBay. eBay, there are scams, and we're going to lose 13% and shipping if we offer free shipping. So in ter- total, you know, let's say we bought it for 100, so $13 is eBay. Another probably five dollars for shipping or tracking, of course, because we need tracking. That's eighteen bucks on top. And as eBay has shown us with the Black Lotus dude, feel real bad for him. But uh, the there was actually a, another more relevant case where a person ordered a bunch of modern masters and they opened them all and then they took all the rares and they sent back the open booster boxes and they said, "Hey, we were I received it this way." So there's no way for the seller on eBay to prove that those booster boxes that he sent were sealed, right? He could make a video, but then you could always say, oh, well, he didn't send that box or he opened the box in a later video or in a later time and then shipped it out. So there's always risk, right? It's when you're talking about very high price items in a very dramatic timeline, which is a pandemic. Yeah, people are going to cheat you. I mean, if they're going to steal a Black Lotus from a dude, what are they not going to steal, right? Like, I mean, the Black Lotus is the car- Cadillac of cards, right? They, they stole a Mitchell's workshop. I don't know if it's the same dude or a different dude, but he's um, the, the guy who lost the Black Lotus also lost a Mitchell's workshop due to the same scam on eBay. So clearly, people are scamming like there's no tomorrow. So my point is, if you fall in these two categories, I don't know what what's wrong with you. If you're if you want to make money from magic cards and you're a Rudy Light and you want to you know pretend that you're this and that and you're really just a faker, you don't make money until the product is sold. And that's how I look at things. So I bought a magic card, file it for two dollars. And now she is $10 and her buy list is $6. Well, I have made exactly $0. I've invested $2 for the potential of selling for some money in the future. But I don't want to sell my folios. Therefore, my buy-in is $2. So a lot of you have questions about why am I buying dual lands when I think the physical card board is going to tank, which I, I believe. I said that for the last few months and no one believed me. But look at where we are now. If you had listened to me and sold when I sold, you would have been way better off than with uh, now, right, than before. Or you would have been better off having sold than not when I told you to sell and when I was selling myself. Um, even though it was a down market, I understood that something was, you know, that this is just cardboard. And so for me, if I'm never going to sell a Falia, which I'm not, then I want to buy Falia at $2. The worst case for me is when Filio jumps to 20 because then I can no longer buy Filio for $2. I have to pay maybe 18 or 15 or something like that. Well, that's seven less Filios. Blank no, I don't want to live in that reality, right? I much like, and same with the, I like the dual lands. I grew up with the dual lands. I never thought they would be valuable, of course, but um, then again, who did when they were kids, right? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I thought Shivering Dragon would be like the most valuable card in Magic right now, but it's not. Obviously, that's when a kid looks at it. It's a big dragon, and creatures were more valuable back then than they are today. So when you talk about Ikoria in general, it's an interesting time period because I think people are right that, yes, it will go up in price, but will go up in price as much as Google will go up in price or Apple or Uber or any of these uh, Tesla or any of these stocks. Yeah, some of them will go down. But you have, right now, if you have cash, you have the opportunity to become a millionaire. If you have 100K in cash right now, which you should, I mean, if you're one of these Rudy lights, right? Why don't you have that? Then, yes, you can make a move. You can buy cruise bonds like Rudy did. Or you can get, I don't know, I'm looking at a few stocks right now. Google in particular is really interesting to me because it has just plummeted. I mean, every stock has plummeted into oblivion minus, you know, toilet paper makers. So let's just focus on this one thing. Should you be buying Ikoria? The answer is no. Because what are you going to do with it? 
are you going to go to your local game store and play? Are you going to get in a large group of players? Are you going to join a magic fest? What are you going to do with this? Are you going to draft it with seven other people? No, no, and no. So, huh. So what are you going to do? Sit on it for value? Uh, hello. <laughs> Stock market says hi. <laughs> Invest in me now. So, I mean, I would just love someone. I would love someone to take this idea that is being presented or forward the YouTube video of Rudy saying invest in Icoria or whatever beyond Pharaohs or that, that he bought a thousand of these uh supposedly a thousand collector boxes of Pharaohs Beyond Death and he was saying two hundred dollars a good price. And I want them to send that video to like uh someone at JP Morgan or someone at you know and uh Goldman Sachs. And I would love for that person Goldman Sachs to reply back and say like why this is not a good idea. Because they'll tell you and as for the Rudelites who don't have any money, who pretend they have money, I mean, you do realize, like, this game that you're playing is incredibly dangerous to you, yourself, your family. If you don't have the money to play this game, I'm sorry, but you're going to get destroyed by people who do have the money to play this game. MTG Finance is a nothing burger. It adds nothing to the value. It doesn't add anything to the game, right? It just inflates the game. And I know, I mean, why, for instance, a paywall that tells you what to do to sell and buy. Do you think that's made you money? No, what you made you money was the trends of the cards going up. Any fool can make money when the cards are going up. Right now is the interesting part, right? So I call out every MTG finance person and tell me, hey, how much money have you guys made recently? I'm serious. How much money have you, MTG finance, made for your paywall subscribers recently i'm dead serious tell me because i'm pretty sure that they've lost massive when things are going good and you everyone's an mtg finance genius right but i when things go poorly then you see what the uh, beast really looks like and if you don't have the money to play this game of mtg finance please please don't play it it's not worth playing i mean it's so ridiculous to think that if these people are really good at MTG, are good at finance and analytics and data collection, they would invest in the stock market. They would be stockbrokers. They would be day traders. They would make so much more money on the stock market than anything they could do in Magic the Gathering. The reason they are not, because they, they fail at that, and now they're moving to Magic the Gathering. So if your two options were to be a st stock trader in Wall Street for Merrill Lynch or Goldman Sachs and make millions in bonuses, or... Talk about MTG Finance Magic the Gathering. What do you think the quality of difference of these two individuals are? And if I gave the opportunity for MT Magic the Gathering person, MTG Finance person, to work, if um, Goldman Sachs called any of these dum-dums and said, hey, you know what, I'm going to give you a $10 million bonus, for a, a $1 million signing bonus. You can cap at $10 million, and we're going to make you partner of, you know, we're going to make you a manager of Goldman Sachs. Why haven't any Goldman Sachs called these theoretic geniuses of the MTG Finance? It's because they're not. They're wannabes. If they truly were good at what they did, they definitely wouldn't be doing MTG Finance. They would do, be doing stock market. And that's what I'm doing. Bye.